Okay, we're back live in Orlando, Florida for IBM's Edge 2012. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE.com. This is a wrap-up segment uh, for day one of day two, two-day coverage of uh, Edge 2012, the IBM Storage Technology Conference, the first step for IBM in their, their transformation in the storage uh, strategy. I'm joined with Dave Vellante, co-founder of Wikibon.org, and uh, John MacArthur, co-host this week with us. So, uh, guys, let's do the wrap, Dave. Uh, so John, Long day, I, what do you think? Yeah, was, I mean, I'm definitely, uh, I'd say Edge exceeded my expectations. I mean, I had reasonably high expectations for Edge, but I mean, the, the quality of the attendees looks good. I mean, a lot of, lot of you know, familiar faces, but a lot of new faces. Um, good, strong practitioner audience, very strong representation from IBM management, which I think is key, even though, again, Steve Mills is not here. I would have liked to see Steve Mills come here. I would, you know, Rod Atkins, big presentation this morning, thought he did a very good job. Um, I like to look at the sort of near term, what's happening, and then bring out the telescope a little bit. So, you know, tactically speaking, the big whales in the storage business, this is a storage event. When you look at IBM, HP, Oracle, EMC, Dell, NetApp, I, I, IBM and EMC sort of stand out as um, doing better than the market on average, near term, okay? Now, the market's ebbing and flowing for, you know, for a number of quarters. NetApp was really kicking butt. They've run into some bumps. Dell has had some financial issues, right? But you know, again, still strong company. Oracle, we see bumps in the road. HP, we saw last quarter, you know, kind of hurting. Um, EMC continues to do well. And IBM, I think what I'm looking for, so that's, so that's the near term, right? And quarters come, quarters go, and you've got comparisons with, with previous years. What I'm looking for from IBM is a continued, sustained momentum in the storage business, which has been lacking at the company. And that's what I think Edge is really all about. It's the coming out party for IBM storage business. And my expectation is, and, and hope is, that IBM can continue that, that momentum, can continue to take its organic R&D, it spends more on R&D than anybody. Now you can argue it doesn't spend as much on storage R&D, but still, spends a lot of money on, on R&D. Um, combined with its cash hoard uh, and strategic acquisitions, which I, again, I'd like to see it get more aggressive in storage. I mean, you saw a $5 billion acquisition of Cognos. You know, right. You're not going to necessarily see that in storage, but I'd like to see, and you have seen, you know, now, so I want to see that continue. So this, to me, is really the coming out party of IBM, and I'm expecting and, 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 and holding IBM's feet to the fire to see that progress and see if they can actually make inroads um, and get back their storage mojo. I think, Dave, I'm impressed by the um, organizational changes around the coordination of this event. And this event, I mean, was talked about by uh, Mark Peters uh, from ESG. Literally, this is a whole new ball game for IBM's management to kind of put the, the, the step forward as a unified team company, not just storage-centric, we're trying to compete with everyone else. They really are looking at the holistic big picture of what the customers want and I'm trying to organize that where storage is central to that equation. So, you know, I think that's a good strategy for them. It plays right to their strengths and uh, takes the whole speeds and feeds out of the game and commoditizes everybody else. Now, they're not really hurting that bad in, that, in the speeds and feeds from, from what we've uh, analyzed, but they're, they're table stakes. Their solutions are going to drive it. So I'm impressed by that. I think yeah. it's a good move. I think, I think, I think IBM's products, their portfolios, you know, solid. I think the issue has been one of organization, it's commitment, you get a lot of, you know, you know, turnover at the very highest levels. You just don't have that continuity and that's something that, you know, I'm hoping Brian Truskowski can bring. I mean, obviously Rod Atkins, Steve Mills, this team has been together for a while and then the people underneath it. The collaboration with, with Tivoli, to me, is one of the most impressive things I've seen at this event. They've been talking about that for a while. And right. You're actually starting to see it, John. Well, yeah, that's right. I mean, I think the first time I remember speaking to Linda Sanford when she was running storage, and um, she's over in services now. I thought, actually, she moved out of services, but um, and and I said at the time, I think you know, I think he looks like you have a tighter integration with uh, Veritas at the time than, than you did with uh, than you do with Tivoli. And she said, yes, but I'm going to fix that. And I think we we're starting to see a lot of that now. There's a m much tighter integration at the product level, at the solution level of the Tivoli products, Tivoli, whether it's Tivoli Performance, uh, uh, TPC, Total Productivity Center, or, uh, but you're seeing much more integration in, in the products there. Um, integration between that and sand volume controller. But there's also sort of moving IBM technology out into other, in, in, into the broader community. So 
you know, licensing IBM technology. So not just being an OEM of other people's technology, but actually licensing that technology and creating tighter partnerships outside. Um, so. so IBM's relevant in the discussion with CIOs, and it's always been always. relevant in the discussion right. with CIOs. Always. So just as I think, you know, we talk about EMC doing a great job with cloud meets big data and the whole IT transformation. They've really, you know, the marketing is, is, is terrific. IBM's, you know, corporate branding around Smarter Planet, the storage group is, is able to draft on that, it gets brought That's into right. situations where you know, other companies you know, cannot compete. Right. Um, so that's a big advantage. What IBM has to do is, 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 like I say, get that innovation mojo back. And that's really key. And I, I think that, again, IBM, I said de-invested. Uh, one of the guests today said, well, not really de-invested, just put on ice. Well, that to me is de-investing. So, right. so that, and it, you can't just turn that on. We're seeing that at HP, how hard it is to say, okay, now I just want to turn on the R&D spigot. It, it takes years and it's, it's been now, let's see, probably five years. Yeah. Since IBM's really said, okay, somebody at the top said, all right, we're going after storage, it's a big market, yeah, I, I we fell behind, let's, let's amp it up. I, and so now we're starting to see the fruits, and we have to see that continued momentum. That's, that's right. to me the key. And you know, IBM structurally, so a GM within IBM storage is typically in the GM role for four years or so, right? So, I mean, that, that's, you don't see GMs of IBM storage for 10 years, right? I mean, how many, how many GMs of IBM storage have you had? So, this commitment to storage, if you want to be if you want to be a leader in the storage space, thought of independently as storage, then you're going to have to have the commitment that it sustains across multiple GMs if they, if they stay with that sort of management. Approach. Yeah, well that's, a, you know, that's I think a, a challenge for IBM because they don't typically have that GM stay in there. You, they, they've, so, so they've, not they've, only is it, it's a challenge if you think of it from a product perspective, it's an advantage if you think of it from how well do you understand the customer. Well, right? the like culture, Brian, for example, was CIO. But the culture IBM. of IBM is to, you know, they, you know, they go in different roles and that's, that's right. how you climb the ladder. But my point is this, that now that the portfolio is, is, has been filled in and, and more completed, um, yep. it's not 100% complete, but maybe now the subsequent GM, first, personally I'd like to see Brian stay on for a while. First of all, I think that would be right. advantageous for the division. Yeah. You look at like Tucci and his tenure, it's like Pat Gelsinger said, John, the Beatles are staying together longer, Tucci's you know, refusing to retire, just tongue in cheek. <laughs> but, but still, that kind of continuity, and Tucci made a lot of mistakes early on, you know, let's yeah. face it, I mean, yeah. you know, the whole documentum thing, he's made a lot of good moves too, but, but that continuity, he's learned from those mistakes, and I think that is really valuable. So I'd like to see more continuity. Now, in, 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 in lieu of that continuity, if, let's say, Brian moves on, I'd like to see a process whereby you know somehow that knowledge transfer gets uh, occurs in, a, in, a, in an orderly fashion, yes, almost yeah. like it occurs from yeah. Palmasama Palmasama to, to Ginny Romney, right? I, mean, right. I think that, that is a that really kind of a orderly transition, transition. That kind of a transition is the model for the division. So right. IBM has to prove that it can I, trickle I, that down into the divisions, yeah, and that's yeah. you know I think key. Or maybe Brian just stays in the job longer because he's he's really got you know, finally got that portfolio to where it needs to be. Yeah. So. What do you guys think about um, the conversation that we've had over the today? Because we've got some tweets coming in saying, wow, I'm really surprised how much they're talking about big data. Hmm. Um, Dave, we obviously, we, all we do is talk about big data and cloud and mobile. How much stuff. we're talking about? No, no, about on the, no, on the Cube okay. and yeah. here. Or at this event. Yeah. Well, kind of both. We, we did talk a lot about big data, but we normally do. But for IBM to be that engaged, it wasn't like they were darting their eyes looking for answers. They're actually... Yeah, uh, I, I think you're making a really good observation. And the reason why people, I think, are impressed is because IBM's got substance. You know, like a lot of assets there. Right. You know, it's not big data washing. I mean, they have made some tremendous investments. I mean, you heard from you know, Jeff Jonas but, um, and a number of others at this event. So there's some real resources there. And IBM you know, is a gamer. Yeah, the, the, there's, there are clearly problems that are entrusted to IBM to work on uh, that, uh, on the analytics side that wouldn't necessarily be entrusted to some other companies, right? So they, they create a body of knowledge within those relationships, I think, that, that is just extremely powerful. And then being able to leverage that outside of, you know, military, defense, government kind of work that they might be involved in with governments around the world, you know. They then leverage that into more commercial applications. That's, that may be, you know, one of the things that they, that they wrestle with. 
I mean, you know, it, it, it's part, so it's not only about the product anymore, right? I mean, it's, it's certainly, you take a company like 3PAR, it was all obviously about the all product, about the product. Or compelling, it's about the product. Once they get subsumed into a larger organization, there's so many other factors. So a lot of people criticize EMC and IBM and, and even HP, look at the EVA for, you know, the products, they're old, they're deficient, blah, 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 blah. A, a lot of the customers don't care. You know, they want a problem solved. Yeah. So what, what organizations like IBM do, the big whales, is when they have a hole in the product line, they go buy. Now, IBM, we think we've heard consistently, IBM's model is to buy in advance of the bubble. Right. right? And, and that you know, means sometimes it's going to be hard mm -hmm. you know, to, to pick the right winners, or you might miss some things. You know, we'll see what happens with Flash. Um, I think the Extreme I.O. acquisition by EMC was an attempt to maybe inject a little IBM yeah, get, get, it a because, little, get a little earlier. People got to ask, well, okay, great. Why, I mean, I think, I think Isilon was a good move at two billion. I think Data Domain was a good move. That's fine, right. I, 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 three par at 2.4 billion. But, but board members have to start asking, well, can't we pick these companies up for less? Right. <laughs> you know? And the only way you can do that is bet earlier. We're not buying their customer base. Right. We're buying their technology to right. put into our customer base. So right. I think IBM's got that right. And, uh, and to have some real strength around the, how do you, how do you bring the technology into a systems company and deliver to the customers, you know, as as a as a solution, with all of the overhead of blue washing. It took nine months to blue wash XIV, right? So, that and that's actually record time for them. I think I I, I didn't know they could actually. Uh, yeah, I think XIV was actually much faster. Like, take, take, like store wise, for example, that took a lot longer. Than yeah, the blue wash that one. Yeah, right. They, I mean, yeah, they, that technology is coming out basically this week, you know, embedded, which right. we had predicted would be the the trend right. in that real-time compression. What do you so guys expect cool. next? From when we're going to have all day tomorrow, we're going to talk to partners and customers tomorrow. Um, today was the exact day, the management right. talking to us. Um, what do you think is, is the going forward uh, plan as you see it, and what do you guys think we need to look for? Kind of a, not, I guess, scorecard, check boxes. What do you think IBM needs to do going forward from this point? Yeah, to me, IBM's got to prove to the channel that it is a, an attractive partner to do business with, and I think it's got to demonstrate that it can, in storage, that it can really change the game outside of the true blue accounts. That, to me, is the key, and it's made some progress there with XIV. Yeah. Um, a lot of that is sort of accounts that used to do business with IBM, where IBM had a really strong relationship, but they haven't bought storage in a couple of years, and now they're back. So, I want to see more of that, across the portfolio. That's, I think, the key, right. and I think that's what the channel is looking for. And it, you know, it's, to me, it's all about the channel right now. Uh, the, the IBM channel's been one of the most loyal channels out there, let's, let's be clear. You, know, you, yeah. you invest heavily in IBM, IBM invests heavily in you. So they support, the, and, they, and they've not been sort of unclear about their channel strategy, right? They allow partners to deliver Global services, yep. they 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 allow them to sign it and have IBM Global Services deliver it. You know, they they they've got they've got I think a, a very good relationship with their select partners. That said, when they get into having to compete in deals that are very much price-driven kinds of deals, they haven't been able to be as competitive sometimes, right? And it's when it's particularly when it's around a specific acquisition, I'm doing a storage acquisition. Right, I think the relationship with NetApp helped them some with the N series that enabled them to sell into a different set of customers with a different set of applications. Because frankly, their NAS strategy was was failed how many times? Uh, you know, it was going to be a Windows-based NAS. It was going to be a Unix-based uh, NAS. Uh, and so, th I think that some of those relationships helped. I I think going I forward, we're not hearing a lot about Sonas this week. We're not hearing a lot about Sonas. That's true. Um, I think. Uh, I'm excited about it. I think the big data angle is interesting. I do too. Uh, I think that they're finally going on some trends that take them out of their narrow vertical focus of storage and the broadened focus is uh, interesting. Um, what I think I'm going to look for and what I'm going to benchmark uh, them besides some of the product, you guys go in the weeds on, on the product success and we'll talk about that, but I'm looking for the marketing to continue. This is, the, if they let this event die the way it is, mm -hmm. then they have not done their job because they have a chance right now to rewrite their narrative around what storage means in context. We heard that in the queue. I think the marketing has to move out of the smarter planet mindset. Keep that going from the brand marketing. IBM, smarter planet, great messaging, uh, entertaining, good, good brand. But as marketers in, in, the, in, the, in the 
the business units need to expand into social. So we, we know social media, there's a variety of different channels and target audiences that need to be addressed. So one, I'm really happy that theCUBE is here, I'm looking forward to more CUBEs, but I think um, they have a chance to actually put new marketing tactics in place to create credibility and expand on that credibility that they have now. And if they don't do that, they'll miss an opportunity. Take a little more risk as it relates to, uh, take, well, take advantage of more channels than what they've taken Well, I, I wouldn't say it's a risk, I just think there's an yeah. unserved market out yeah. there of people who want to know what's IBM's, what IBM is and, and relative to storage and solutions. And you got Tivoli, and you got, they got cloud, they got everything. IBM has the packages. Right. They have the total package. If you had to put a team together and say compete in this, uh, cloud mobile social world, mm -hmm. they have all the assets. The question right. is, can they assemble that? Look like they're going to, and just a matter of telling people. Right. Yeah, I think, I think, one, of the, I think one of the big issues is how do you, get, how do you um, take away some of the negative perceptions of IBM when you think of them narrowly in the context of yeah. storage historically, um, uh, historically for the last 10, 15 years or so. Um, and and how do you how do you sustain and grow the positive messages going forward? I think you're right. Well, and IBM's ace in the hole continues to be the brand, right? Yeah, and the services. Yeah, right. that's and they have client relationships solid. Well, and their knowledge of verticals. And there's, I mean, like nobody does the deep kind of vertical segmentation that IBM does to give a knowledge of applications, you know, and business processes within so, verticals. So the point is that 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 fundamental has allowed the storage group to, to make some missteps and be, be somewhat complacent. And then finally, you know, there was the wake up call, let's say five years ago. Okay. And, um, and again, I expect steady, slow, steady, you know, progress. Because IBM's got the right model, you know, the, the economic model inside IBM obviously works. You know, the M&A model obviously works. And so, um, I mean, IBM has got a great position right now. They have uh, some things to work on. We've talked about that. But on the positive note is, Dave, to your point, they have incredible customer focus. Um, they do have a strong channel that they've invested in. They could be broader on the channel side, I think, um, there. But they have great focus on the customer, and they know the verticals, and they have the relationships. So it's a supplier question as a, as a brand. Mm -hmm. So they have that as an ace in the hole, and I think storage is smart not to draft on other events. Dave, you pointed that out earlier today, and I think that is absolutely a great thing. Control their own destiny, have this kind of event, put programs in place that are storage-centric, but not just storage product. Good point, yeah, right. And I think that th their ability to do, do uh, data analytics specific to business problems that they see their yeah. customers facing, I think that's... Yeah, and I think, you know, the marketing side, one thing that I will say has been great is the Watson uh, campaign has right. been fantastic. They've gotten great press, um, great flexing their muscles around big data, but yet that's a storage problem. Big data is all about storage, right? But yet analytics, it's, they're in this weird zone where storage is the king of the market right now in terms of what people want to talk about and build on. And yet it's solutions around storage. So, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> analytics is an example, right? So um, interesting. Well, and, I, and I, think, I think as things move to more real-time analytics, you know, that's an area where you know, they understand, they understand real time. Okay, so that's a wrap on, on IBM. Guys, great day today. Um, also news around, big news happening around the web, Dave. Uh, Xbox signed uh, deals with ESPN. Um, a lot of stuff going on with E3, Microsoft. This amazing uh, uh, living room takeover opportunity for uh, cord cutters for the web. So, I mean, Xbox has got a huge platform, expanding on that gaming platform to bring TV to that platform is amazing. And just general news, you know, the war games, we've been covering the uh, cyber war between the US and the Stuxnet virus, so a lot of stuff. Go to siliconangle.com, siliconangle.com is where all the, that coverage will be. Mukiban.org is where all the research is. Go there and check out the free content on both sites, and obviously siliconangle.tv is where the videos are. And if you're on YouTube, you can go to uh, youtube.com slash siliconangle, and all the videos from theCUBE are up there. So. Um, hope you enjoy that content. I um, want to say um, thanks to IBM for letting us be here, uh, be this independent media, watch their commercials, they support us, and uh, so support them by watching their commercials. Dave, thank you very much. Thanks for John. having me, John. John. Okay, guys, that's a wrap from day one here at Edge. 
2012, live in Orlando. We'll see you tomorrow.